lot of fans probably know you for the work that you did on the Elder Scrolls Online, uh, but now you're creative director on Borderlands 3. So is there anything from the Elder Scrolls Online that you kind of brought with you to Borderlands 3? Uh, absolutely. So first, I was a huge fan of Borderlands. You know, I mean, from the first game on through the second. My son and I played the second game. So one of the things that I really liked about it was that multiplayer aspect. Like, I could play with my son. And, you know, coming from an MMO, it's like one of the things that really, you know, kind of gets your juices flowing as well. Then you have, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls is great, but the sense of humor and the kind of irreverence and genuine nature of Borderlands like really spoke to me. So I thought that was one of the things that would be great about working on the title. Yeah, and I can imagine like the, the type of genres they are as well. Like Elder Scrolls is a bit more medieval and serious and Borderlands 3 has got some chaotic wildness to it. So yeah. was it like a weird one to kind of switch between that? It's just fun. I, 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 I really play a lot of games but I play a lot of shooters and have for a long time. And so it was, it was fantastic being able to work on a shooter and really concentrate, like, here's the things I like about shooters. I like it when they're really smooth, when they're super reactive, when you can see the environment you know, get destroyed, and those things where you don't have to worry quite as much about latency, and it's one of the beauties of, of shooters. So, man, I, I was stoked, to be honest, yeah. Gearbox's last title was uh, Battleborn, and that didn't really capture the masses. But was there anything in there that your team kind of brought over that would fit perfectly for Borderlands 3? I, I mean, anytime you have a team, like the team we have, and it's an incredibly talented team, right? There are lessons from every game that you work on that you bring in, right? I mean, I'm sure you know that. But I, I would say that, you know, one of the things that they, they tried out was how much of the multiplayer that we got in. So like some of our matchmaking services right now, um, you can see that you might have people who are like, they really like hubs or something like that to, to matchmake. Man, I came from a place where like, you want to get into something really fast, right? So a menu-driven thing is super fast to be able to matchmake with people that you know, either you don't know, they're strangers, or just be able to play with people at any time. Yeah. And so I, I think that's another thing is like playing with people like regardless of their level, you know, regardless of you know, I, I guess the, uh, how much time they have to spend versus how much time you have to spend on a game is fantastic. So that's, that's another really cool thing that I, I think the team has embraced wholeheartedly. You talked about on stage how, it's specifically about all the leveling, like it, it doesn't matter if someone's a higher level or a lower level, like everything is all balanced out. How did you kind of get that wrong, like so that another player can see guns but they're completely different to what uh, someone who might be a lower or higher level might get? Right. So. That was that was actually kind of tricky at first because when we started talking about you know even even bringing things from other games like Diablo had the instance loot and we were like really looking at that like that is a super cool feature right and I, I it really made that sing like I have to be able to find loot my time as a player is valuable right and I have to be able to find loot that I want and so to go play in a game that's like say 20 levels lower than me but just because my friend is there, I don't want to sacrifice my time in, in getting that. So that's why Instant Salute really became something that was like super important for the team. Recently I was going through Borderlands 2 again, and uh, it was that situation of where there'd be different kind of loot, but we'd have to argue as who's going to get the higher level gun and who's going to get the lower level gun. With that, like some, I personally enjoyed that, like having that battle, and you so, spoke on stage that you're bringing back that classic kind of mode, but how does that all work exactly? Is it like going into a menu and switching it on, or is there more to it? It is exactly like going into a menu and switching it on, absolutely. You want that to be something that people can do, um, because imagine you're playing your game, right, and you've put like 25 hours in this game, you're so far along in the story, and then you're like, hmm, I, I want to be able to play in classic mode now if I was playing, you know, in what we call cooperation mode. We actually call it internally cooperative and cooperation, right? And so, it, like, if I, I was playing that and I want to be able to switch to that mode, I just want to be able to do that on the fly and play with people. That's, that's, that's kind of the thinking of, like, hey, really we do mean I just want to be able to play the way I want to play when I want to play it, right? Right. So it, it's not a matter of, like, shutting down your game, starting a new one to go into classic mode, it's as quick as... Well, now you, you will have to do a, a map load switch right. on something like that because of the way we do things in the game, you know, behind the scenes. But, but that's about it. That's about the most difficulty you'll have. Borderlands is iconically one of the first looter shooters that managed to, like, really strike home the mainstream. Uh, since then, we've had quite a few other looter shooters come out. We've had Destiny and Anthem and even The Division kind of delve into that genre. Do you think Borderlands is 
going to still fit into that market now that we've got all these new looter shooters? Or would you say it's a bit saturated these days? Uh, okay, I, I look at it this way. Um, I've played Destiny, played Destiny 2, played Anthem. I like all those games, you know, for different reasons, right? But when I look at art style, now I, I am kind of an art style nerd and I like something, you know, like, okay, I want to have... I don't know what it is about the Borderlands art style, but to me it like relaxes me and you know when I play, um, sometimes versus more realistic. And some people love realistic. Another thing is the writing and, and the way we you know craft our missions where you get that irreverent style, but it, it feels genuine, right? If it didn't feel genuine, like everybody talks about humor, but describing humor is really hard to do and it can be too over the top. And I think Borderlands hits that fine line. So I, I don't think any of those other games quite hit that art style. I don't think they hit the same irreverence and humor. I think they're great games. That's, you know, it's just a difference. And so, do I think there's room? I think there's tons of room, right? Like, just me, as you mentioned in the interview early, you said like, hey man, you came over here. So yes, this is the game I want to play. It's the game I get to work on. And that's, that's cool. I'm working on the game I want to play, right? Like. The Division and Destiny. Yeah. Is there a, anything from those games that kind of got provided inspiration for what you want to do or what you have done in Borderlands 3? Okay, so you heard me mention how I really like reactive shooters. One of my favorite things about Destiny is the, the way that, you know, you're shooting, it feels very reactive. And so you'll note that some of our environments you're seeing up there that they have the destruction in the environment. Even from what we call like, and this may be getting, be getting a little too technical, but we have flinches and we have things that are called launches uh, in the game. Like, a flinch is that enemy can still keep firing, but you'll see how they flinch. And that's something we actually paid a lot of attention to. We paid a lot of attention to bullet magnetism. So some of those like really hardcore shooting mechanics that I think they nailed are things that we took inspiration from. And I love saying that because I love those games. Do you think Borderlands 3 will have any kind of like live aspects, things like raids? Do you think they'll be making an appearance in Borderlands 3? Or uh, okay, so you, you said raids. So Borderlands has always had raids of a type. But I think you're, you're, you mean more of like the events that they have in Destiny where you can jump in. You know, uh, I think we are more of that cooperative game that you can play and you can bring in those people. Like you can either match make for them or something like that. So I don't think that's you know, something we would take from there. But, um, you know, who knows what the future holds. But for now, like I, I love the fact that we're a game where you can play through the story. You also have like a lot of repeatable content and really cool modes that we're not announcing yet, but you, you will see as we go through. So in terms of like future stuff then, do you think you've got like some fun events planned as DLC type stuff? Uh, I, I do think there's gonna be a lot of cool DLC coming out. Yeah, again, we'll talk about it later, but yeah. Borderlands 2 delved it a little bit into character customization where we had like being able to change the skins and helmet and like customize the colors. As we've seen uh, on the uh, stage show, Borderlands 3, kind of, it's got character customization again, yeah. uh, but with a few added bits to it. Like, could you tell us more about this, the character customization? Uh, sure. So you, uh, you've seen the heads and skins, and probably what you saw in the presentation, you might have seen things like the emotes that you can change. and You know, you know those are fun bids for socialization. Uh, we had something up there, I think you saw something called Echo Skins. You know the Echo device that Claptrap gives you? You know, you can see it, you pull that out, and you can see those things. So there's a lot of different customizations of it, and uh, we didn't even talk about vehicles and customizing your vehicle. So now you can go through, in the Catch Ride, you can hitch, or uh, not hitchhike, but you can actually uh, take over a vehicle from an enemy, right? And once you take that vehicle over, you can drive it back to our catch a ride station. You can get parts, and you have all sorts of different parts that you can start equipping on your vehicles and customizing those for like just you know crazy different uh, types of vehicles as you're driving around. So, like, how did you approach Borderlands 3? Was, was the, did you have like a checklist of things that you wanted to do, or was it like you, you saw Borderlands 2 and you were like, this was pretty great, let's just add a few more things to that? Uh, wow, there's, yeah, so if you come into a franchise, you know, I, I don't know that you have a checklist, but you definitely have a certain set of goals. Uh, one of the things that we mentioned casually up there, but, but is one of my favorite things, is we added a lot of different boss encounters. So you saw a mouthpiece fight, things like that. But you can imagine if you're going to different places to find vaults, and we've used that word in the plural now, that there are, you know, there's always a guardian to a vault. So I think when we talk about bosses, we still haven't even touched the, you know, the tip of the iceberg of like how cool the bosses are going to be. And that was one of the things where getting on the team, like, hey, how do you guys feel about this? And the team's like, yes, let's do this. And that was really cool. Borderlands 3 is scheduled to release on September 13th. We will be on Xbox. We will be on PlayStation. And of course, we'll be on PC.
Thank you very much. Thank you.